Hey, everybody, it's Adam Farkas. Welcome to another OD Wire webinar. Thanks so much for making it out here tonight. Tonight's uh, talk is all about elevating your practice with innovative technologies. And specifically, we're going to be talking a bit about the iRefract. And we have Dr. Greg O'Connor here with us. And Dr. O'Connor, if you've heard his webinars before, he was with us last year. He runs Malibu Eye Center and Malibu Insight in beautiful Malibu, California. And we always love having him on because as you, you may you know, surmise, the competition in California and Southern California is, is, is harsh, right? But he has built a successful and thriving practice at two locations. And tonight he's gonna tell us all about how he uses technology to run both of his locations efficiently. So we always love having him on. And I guess with that said, why don't I get out of the way and Greg, why don't you take it away? Thank you, Adam. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I'll be telling you a little bit about the how and why I reimagined my clinical practice of 40 years and why I chose Visionics as my eye exam technology. So I did research all the different vendors of all the most advanced technologies to elevate my practice in creating my new location. And I was really intent with my new location to increase uh, patient throughput and practice efficiency from all what I'd learned in my established practice. And uh, as pleasantly found out that when you incorporate a uh, new technology, uh, you always are rewarded with a, a nice return on investment from streams of revenue you couldn't uh, predict beforehand. So I'm a product of Midwest. I'm a graduate of the University of Michigan and the Illinois College of Optometry, where I was most fortunate to be a recipient of the Armed Forces Health Professions Scholarship, which ultimately led to my relocation to Southern California in that I was assigned a duty station at the Naval Regional Medical Center at Camp Pendleton, a Marine Corps base just north of San Diego. And during my three years of active duty, I spent a fair amount of time scouting around Southern California for a practice location. And shortly before my uh, discharge from active duty, I purchased uh, a little hole in the wall, 550 square foot, half day a week practice with exam technology that an optometrist in 1904 would have been very comfortable using. But I saw it as a diamond in the rough, and today I enjoy uh, two thriving locations that keep my staff and me busy seven days a week, my established practice, Malibu Eye Center Optometry, and just a five minute stroll away, my new baby of two years now, Malibu Inside Optometry. Um, I'm a believer that to be successful in private practice, you have to involve yourself in your community and in your professional association. So the rest of the bullets on the chart there speak to my uh, activities in regards to that. So. Uh, above on the right is the picture of the exterior of uh, my new location, Malibu Inside Optometry. It's in a beautiful new shopping center in Malibu that is more like a community gathering spot. There's a wonderful playground for children, a lovely sensory garden with all different types, types of herbs planted and a beautiful fountain and an outdoor amphitheater to conduct uh, local events and entertainment. To the right of Malibu Inside Optometry, is Blue Bottle Coffee, which is an upscale coffee house that attracts uh, a young affluent demographic. And on the other side is a Tesla dealership, which again caters to a young uh, affluent uh, demographic. My patients generally are quite worldly. They've been to all the finest eye clinics in the world. Uh, they've been in all the fine uh, optical boutiques in the world. So they have high expectations when it comes to their eye exams and their frame selection. The picture, uh, the lower picture is the interior of Malibu Inside Optometry. We tried to create an environment that's a very clean looking, very efficient looking, but also warm and comforting. We tried to uh, make everything so that staff and patient flow was excellent so we could handle uh, a walk-in uh, type of practice. Uh, we have a lot of people that call up and they, they want to see the doctor today. So we tried to make it so we could accommodate everybody. <clears throat> so we'll talk now a little bit about um, how advanced technologies do indeed elevate uh, your practice. What you see here uh, is the iRefract 
system. It consists of an automated binocular digital ferropter that has this neat little pop-up near point chart that you can adjust for all different focal lengths and present all kinds of near point displays. Then uh, there is the digital acuity short chart, the VX25, and the tablet that controls uh, the exam. Uh, you can see it's a, it's a beautiful compact two by four footprint. And I think the industrial and ergonomic design of the instruments is, is beautiful and very, very comfortable for my patients to use. It uh, certainly has made my life easier. I delegate all the diagnostic data collection to my technicians, and uh, that makes it uh, easier for me because then I can just absorb all the information that this wonderful technology uh, gives me to uh, prepare my presentation for my patients. And as a result, the patients have a great deal of confidence in the exam they've received and the information I give them. So when they go out into the dispensary, they're feeling very, very comfortable. And we we do very well out there as a result of their trust that we've established in the exam room. Also, my uh, staff loves working with this technology, and we'll be talking a little bit more about that as we go along. So one thing I noticed in my established practice uh, was that our younger patients didn't necessarily like to make and keep appointments. Uh, they're more impulsive. They're very busy people. So we knew that the new location really had to easily accept uh, walk-ins, design it more of a boutique style spa, salon type atmosphere to kind of get rid of that a sterile, colder clinic look that might turn a younger demographic off and just, uh, you know, be very flexible in the way we accommodate uh, our patients. This photograph here shows the other components of my Visionics eye exam technology. In the foreground is the Visionics VX40, the lens meter. Uh, as you'll see later, it has a phenomenal uh, optical display that shows you the layout of the optics of lenses. It's very easy to use. You simply place the patient's glasses in the eyeglass holder and you press a button, it does all the rest. In the background is the VX120 uh, plus the dry eye module. And this is actually 10 instruments in one. The wealth of information that instrument gives me is amazing. And again, you can see this lovely small footprint, a very nice uh, ergonomic and industrial design. And as we'll talk a little bit about later, uh, this technology really can set it up for any sort of telemedicine type of operation. So how did it increase my patient throughput and practice efficiency? Well, this slide kind of gives you the flow of how that comes about. On the far left is uh, a picture of one of my technicians, Gloria. She's comfortably seated in the uh, eye refract system. Uh, we tell our patients really just to plug the instrument. They can wrap their arms around it. They're very comfortable. It's an open space environment. You can even conduct the exam with the lights on. And so my patients who tend to be claustrophobic are very, very comfortable in this environment. And the slide also shows you the near point display that can pop up and uh, you can adjust it for different focal length. And there's a wonderful variety of near point uh, displays. Then while my technicians are gathering uh, information from the Visionics technology, I'm in the middle there, the clinician actually looking at all the information that the technology being gathered by my uh, tech technicians is offering me. So I can begin to understand the presentation that I'm going to give to the patient. And then on the far right is a picture of actually what I love to do. This is really what I feel my role is. Uh, and the wonderful thing about this technology is as you're explaining to patients how you're gonna help them, you can actually show them. You can actually let them see for themselves the findings that you've gathered. And the confidence that builds in the patient is incredible. And there's the old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, I found that through demonstrations to patients of uh, this wonderful uh, display of information, that these pictures are worth thousands of dollars in uh, revenue. So this is a picture of the actual tablet. Uh, my technician, Jennifer, in this case, uh, actually conducting an exam. It is a wonderful scripted step-by-step -step method that's very, very easy 
for your technicians to learn. It took my technicians roughly about a month to feel totally comfortable using it. It's largely just gaining confidence and kind of just going through the steps and all that. Uh, they've done a spectacular job. I personally have never done an exam with the eye refract. I've always just insisted that they do it and they do a remarkable job and I think even better than I could do it at this point. So that gives them a feeling of real empowerment. They uh, have gained great self-esteem from doing this. Certainly in the patient's eyes, they look very professional. Often, you know, the patients even think that they're interns or doctors. And so this helps, you know, retain staff because they, they really look forward to conducting exams, coming to the office every day. And in fact, they kind of, they're a little uh, competitive as to who gets to conduct these exams. So it's sort of the beginning of the day, we have to have a design like who's going to do what exam with whom. So this is uh, a picture of my third technician, Sabrina, actually conducting an exam with Gloria, holding the tablet. If you look closely, that's actually the dual Shack Hartman wavefront aberrometers uh, gathering the information from Gloria's eyes. It's incredibly accurate technology. The patients, again, are, are very, very comfortable are going through this. They're very, very impressed. And, uh, you know, it really, it really minimizes the which is better one or two uh, type of approach. So patients feel much more comfortable and their response is much more confident. So I couldn't even imagine all the different uh, sources of revenue that investing in this technology would create, but there have been a lot. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Patients are, are, are really blown away with the technology. I mean, all the time we hear them say, oh, wow, this is like Star Wars. So they take pictures of it. They share it on social media. They tell their family members and friends about it. Malibu is special and in, 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 in the way that it attracts uh, almost every weekend now tourists from about 120 mile radius of Malibu. And a lot of people come to our center to, uh, to dine or uh, get a beverage and they mosey in and they see, you know, the nice selection of eyewear we have and the ambiance of the practice. And often they'll say, gee, can I get my eyes examined? And once they're exposed to this technology, they, they never go back to their original doctors. So we now have a, a wide radius of patient draw that, uh, again, is added dramatically to our return on the investments, uh, the information that the iRefract system generates is, is virtually foolproof. I, do, I don't think we've had one remake just based on the findings of the wavefront aberrometers themselves. And again, because of the confidence that uh, we uh, instill in patients from the exam, our capture rate out in the dispensary is virtually 100%. So this is a picture of uh, the actual display of the results that the technician gets at the conclusion of their conducting the manifest refraction. The top bar is the uh, findings from the VX40 lens meter fed directly into the eye refract system. The second bar down shows the wavefront aberrometer refraction. The third bar down is the final manifest refraction from the exam. And the fourth bar down is unaided visual acuity. So the technician can scroll through the uh, different ones and have the patient uh, select which ones uh, they prefer. And it also gives a very accurate uh, PD for the patient. So the patient response is really, really pretty wonderful. Again, uh, they will go on social media, they'll share pictures of the instruments, the results from the instruments, and they really rave that, you know, they've never seen anything like it, how comfortable it was, how pleasant it was, how it really minimized the, which is better, one or two, which a lot of patients really are kind of uptight about. We've had no problems at all with our patients uh, questioning that our technicians are conducting the exam. So uh, it's, it's really been a wonderful hit. So to kind of review, new technology adoption. Even my wealthy patients feel that, you know, an eye exam, you know, I, I wear, uh, it's a, you know, fairly considerable expense. So they enjoy seeing a significant portion of that revenue reinvested in them in the latest technology. It really shows them that you really care about them and their visual well-being.
It certainly has made my life a lot easier. I even joke with my patients. I say, I used to have to work for a living, but with my wonderful technicians and this technology, I can just do what I love, which is educating my patients, presenting all the different options available uh, to them. And uh, that certainly has changed in the last uh, 40 years. Uh, when I first entered practice, gosh, you know, the choice in spectacle lenses, a lot of them were still glass lenses. So CR39 was pretty new. Most people then still wore standard bifocals and trifocals. Progressive edition lenses were just beginning to, to take off. Medical optometry didn't exist. And certainly there was no refractive uh, surgery co-management. But today you think about all the different options uh, that we have to educate our patients about. All the different lens choices, all the different contact lens choices, all the different choices in terms of vision therapy, sports vision, rehabilitation for brain injury, concussions, refractive surgery co-management options. Uh, if they have a medical issue going over all their medical options, all the nutritional options now that we have to educate our patients about. So the, the wealth of information and the options we have to present to them is, is far greater today and uh, that's uh, when you present all these options to the patients, then you, you gain revenue from lots of different ways. For instance, we put in uh, like a in, little uh, in-store dispensary for nutritional supplements, for over-the-counter recommendations for dry eye, for uh, allergy eye, that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, if they come in to purchase some more aloe or whatever, they might spot a sunglass that they really like and purchase that or reminds them to make an appointment for their spouse or their children. So it really generates a return on investment in, in lots of interesting ways. And of course, uh, increased efficiency uh, by, by having my technicians use this fantastic technology that uh, all they really do is basically make sure the patient is comfortable and press a button. And the amount of information I glean from that is incredible. So uh, the, the exam flows quickly and thoroughly. Uh, and uh, my staff obviously loves uh, doing it. And uh, of course, then I have all the data before me to make the presentation to the patient. So yeah, operating at the top of my license. Uh, yeah, it, uh, when you educate patients about all the different options, again, wow, the uh, confidence that uh, they, they have in, in and your care for them is, is really wonderful. And that way they're, they're very much likely to be very compliant patients So return when they get their recall. They know it's gonna be pleasant. You're not gonna put drops in their eyes. You're not gonna to touch their eyes. It's a really nice, pleasant environment to come to. So we try to lower the barrier uh, as much as we can for our patients uh, to come in and see us. And of course, uh, again, the final bullet, uh, the patient confidence in my treatment plan is, is excellent. So this uh, last slide uh, kind of shows you some of the telemedicine implications it has. Uh, the person who I think is the foremost in our profession is Dr. Rasa Tamalavicious, who has about 16 uh, different eye care clinics in uh, Chicago, all within a, a short distance of one another. And she really maximizes uh, telemedicine. This is a picture of me in my established location talking with a former technician, John, who now is an optometry student in Florida. So it gives you some idea of how you can interface with the patients, uh, review all the data, even if you're not on site. So now the best part, uh, questions and answers. All right, well, thank you, Greg. So uh, remember, if anybody wants to ask a question, feel free, there's a box on the right side of your screen that says questions. Feel free to type in there um, and, uh, we will try to answer your questions in the order in which they are received. <laughs> One question that people have who may not actually use any sort of autorefracting technology at all right now, how often do you actually have to adjust the output of the machine, right? That you have to manually refine the refractions. Is this something that you do a lot or a little? About 10% of the time. And it's usually a patient um, that either has something like clinically significant cataract, you know, wavefront aberrometers don't like, any discontinuity in the wavefront. So that's the type of patient. Um, if, you know, if it's been a significant amount of time, especially for like hyperopes, you know, if they've waited, you know, six or seven years, uh, then yeah, you know, the, the jump between what they're currently wearing and what the wavefront uh, technology might indicate uh, has to be tempered, you know, 
because uh, you're not going to accept that big a jump. But those are about the the only true circumstances where I feel even if I have to do it, generally uh, the axis is always spot on from the wavefront aberrometer. I mean, I can easily go back and forth between the axis they came in with and the axis that the wavefront aberrometer has generated. Almost 100% of the time they go with the axis of the wavefront aberrometer. And then usually for the sphere of the cylinder, it's just generally a quarter diopter either way. So it makes the one or two part uh, of, of kind of doing the manual, uh, you know, confirmation for the patient, you know, pretty straightforward. Right. Um, question here about remakes. I think you said uh, earlier in the talk that your remake rate was very, very low. Um, so question here, when remakes do happen, what typically is, is the reason that they're happening? Uh, the most common reason is really seg height measurement for progressives that's, you know, the other one is when people want single vision lenses for near work, trying to kind of gauge, you know, really what their focal distance is, you know, you can be a little off on that. So you might have to adjust that back and forth a, a little bit. Um, really, that's that's about it, really. I mean, prescribing off the wavefront. Uh, virtually, I, I don't think we've ever had to do a, a redo be, just based on information coming from the dual shack Hartman uh, wavefront aberrometers. They're, they're that accurate. Right. Uh, interesting question here. I don't know how familiar you are with, with uh, other technologies, but a person had a comment here about the OPD scan too. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that's an, a different unit, an older unit. Um, uh -huh. that they were disappointed with the accuracy of it. Um, and I don't know if you can compare and contrast um, the accuracy of this unit versus that. I have an OPD too in my established uh, practice. Yeah, it's it's not as slick. Uh, I think I, the um, algorithm that's employed in interpreting the tilts created by the lenslets and the 1500 points of refraction in the eye refract system make it far superior to anything else on the market. Right. Oh, interesting question here. So what happens if you lose the internet? Uh, are you are you out of business? How, how does this Yeah, work? you're out of business, yeah. So internet's required to actually use it. So this is a, a top tip, just to make sure that you have reliable internet. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much true of all the technology we use, yeah. Yep, so, so again, internet. And another question here, again, along the same lines. Um, you showed a picture of a tablet before. How does this mm -hmm. actually work with, with the tablets? Do you, did you buy multiples for your office? Well, the tablet that I show actually comes with the eye refract system. So the, the tablet that the technician uses to conduct the, the eye exam, uh, the eye refract, comes with the system. Now, we do, we do have multiple Apple uh, iPads uh, in the office, uh, just, you know, so like I can review on the fly all the information being fed to me from the different instruments, uh, the all the instruments uh, findings from the different technologies can be fed right into my tablet wherever I am. Right. Question here, and I don't know if you're going to know the answer to this, but the, uh, the iRefract has gone through two generations so far. Do you know the difference between the two? I do not. Again, there are uh, staff members uh, at Visionics who could answer that question in detail, but <laughs> I don't know that. Yeah, so if anybody from Visionics wants to just type in and let me know, I can uh, you know, give, give uh, folks a rundown about the difference between the two generations. Um, I don't know if Rachel's still here. Yeah, because that is an interesting question because when you go to their website, you can actually see they're talking about the second generation. Yeah, yeah, I, I have the first generation. And when the iRefract system was put in my office, that particular unit was the most advanced in the world at that time. It was hand-built in uh, Tel Aviv uh, with all they had learned from previous iterations of the iRefract model. So in the moment, two years ago, I had the most advanced iRefract system, but uh, yes, apparently they're developing a second generation yeah. now. Well, let me ask you this then, because you know you had a first generation. You were pretty much—I don't want to say a guinea pig, but like you were out there on the the sort of cutting edge, reliability-wise. What's it been like? Excellent. 
Excellent. No problems whatsoever. And if we do, the Visionics people are fantastic. Their support staff, we all, my technicians and I rave about them. They, they get they get right to you, but it's not a big issue. You know, usually, you know, if worst case scenario, uh, we just reboot it. And we, that's rebooting, we, we put the patient uh, through another procedure, but that that's really rare. That's really rare. Right. Oh, and so Rachel just, just uh, responded. So the difference between the two is the algorithm was improved and the new unit is faster. So I guess this is like going from an iPhone 12 to an iPhone 13. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, it, it, yeah. The, the the first iterations were pretty darn good in both uh, areas. Right. So ec excellent. So let me see any other questions here that people have. Uh, can it do over refractions? Sure. So that's not a problem. Question here: How long did it take you to get uh, your techs up and running with the new system? Well, first off, uh, the trainers from Visionics were excellent, and not only in the training but making themselves available after they left for any questions my technicians might have. But because of the quality of the training, overall it took about a month uh, for them to, to really feel comfortable. And you know, now after two years, they, they're just so smooth in the way they conduct these exams. All three of them do a, a beautiful job. Great. And, and here's another interesting question. So your, your established practice was there for a good, what, 30 or 40 years, right? Correct. Uh -huh. um, did you have any staff? You always hear about uh, these sort of tech Im implementations where some of the staff threatens to mutiny <laughs> because they, yeah. they like the old way of doing stuff. They don't want to change and, and they get terrified when they see new stuff coming in. What was that process actually like when the staff was being trained up? Yeah, it, uh, you know, I've had staff members like that in the past, uh, and that's why they're no longer staff members. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I pretty much insist everybody that they, that they really enjoy and that they're happy doing what they're doing. If not, they're really not welcome here. You know, the, what we do for patients is amazing. Uh, it's so important in their lives. We're creating, uh, you know, the most precise tool for them in terms of glasses, contact lenses that allow their brains to operate at the most efficient level. And um, all my technicians really, uh, really love that. And really, I got no resistance. They, they love it and in large part because right from the beginning too, if I'm thinking about a new technology I come across in a journal or at a CE meeting or something like that, I want to buy my technicians right away. And I say, what do you think about this? And you know, if it all well, sounds like something we're interested in and we try to expose ourselves to the technology at a convention or whatever and check it all out and see if we like it and see if we'd be comfortable integrating it. And then, you know, if, uh, if we like it, we acquire it, we all train together. Uh, and so it's actually a very upbeat, uh, positive and wonderful experience from our, or from our viewpoint. Excellent. And question here about price. I, I, I don't think you'd be the person to ask, I suppose, about current prices and, and how the system is actually uh, priced. Perhaps someone from, from Visionics would want to chime in um, for folks who want to buy units. Because I guess the, the question is, of course, how many of these units does an office typically need? Um, assuming you're not Dr. Rasa. <laughs> yeah, assuming you're not Dr. Rasa. Uh, well, um, I, I can't speak to you know what the current costs are. I don't know, frankly. Um, all I can say is that at the time, there was uh, new lane financing that made it very easy to acquire the technology. And uh, frankly, uh, you know, my practice manager ha handles all the finances. Uh, so I can't, you know, break down numbers or anything like that. But I can just tell you that generally uh, when I acquire sophisticated advanced technology, I don't even really think too much about what the acquisition cost is or what the ongoing cost is, because I know within a really short period of time, I'm going to be enjoying a tremendous return on that investment. And whatever the monthly payment is, it's pretty insignificant. And a uh, good comment here, follow up from the company. So what you'll want to do if you're interested is book a demo online and then they can go through all the details for you uh, and ex explain what your options might be once they understand your practice a little bit better. I'll actually put the URL up in the follow-up email that goes to everybody who's here tonight, but you can see it right here below, visionics.com slash demo. But again, I'll embed that 
in the follow-up emails that go out to everyone after this is over. So if you're at all curious or interested, just register for a demo, uh, and I'm sure they're going to contact you and sort of figure out, you know, what fits for your practice. I guess that's about it. It looks like uh, we're, we're reaching sort of the end of our questions, but if people have more, we're obviously going to post an archive of this webinar up on OD Wire. Feel free to come to that archive, and there's going to be a discussion thread beneath it. Uh, feel free to post, and uh, Greg will forward any uh, questions to you, uh, so maybe sure. we can continue the conversation online. Yeah, uh, I would welcome that. All right, great. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming out. Thanks, Rick, for participating, and uh, I guess uh, we'll see everybody online. Thank you, Adam. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.